This whole thing is the lingual flange. This is the retromolar pad region. This whole lingual flange has got from here to the other side is called the lingual crescent area. From here to here is called the pre-myelohyoid area because this is the area where the myeloid muscle is actually there in the mouth. From this region the myelohyoid muscle actually moves down to the hyoid region. So this area beyond this is called the retromyelohyoid region of which this particular part of the turn is called the lateral throat form. The retromyeloid region is what I'm going to mold first. Then I will do the retromyeloid region on the other side. Then come to my premyelohyoid or what we would call the lingual sulcus and then finally do the sublingual crescent. After this we go on to the masetric notch area where the masetric muscle is going to work. Then come to the buccal up to the buccal frenum which will be the buccal flange and then beyond the buccal frenum into the labial which is called the labial flange. So we're going to start molding our mandibular special tray. I'm going to start off with my retromyelohyoid region. I'm going to soften a little bit of my compound. I always want to soften a very little bit because otherwise I cannot manipulate the material. I want to soften it over direct flame. My water bath is set to 60 degrees Celsius, soften it over direct flame, you see it's shiny and slumping slowly. At this point, I'm going to place the material over a dry tray. I've just done my lateral throat form area. I'm going to soften it a bit, dip it in water and I'm going to roll it, get it ready for the next time I'm going to use it. Okay, and leave it there. This one, if it's going off the tray like you can see here, you can pull it onto the tray but you should have a wet finger. You want to wet your finger and want to pull it onto the tray. Okay, and then you soften it again. Nice and shiny. That should be enough. Come into the patient's mouth. Rotate it into the mouth. Here for the sun fork, lift up the tongue and place the tray in position. Ask him to gently lick the upper lip all the way so that the tongue molds that region of your lateral throat form. You don't want to protrude the tongue. Okay, after this movement you want to take it out and have a look and you see how the material is forming a small curve here. This curve is called the reverse S curve that you get. Now you can see that it's slightly off my tray as well. I'm going to add some material here and replace it in the mouth so I get the full width of the sulcus. Right? I'm going to dry my tray again. Be on. And I'm going to just soften it gently. Soften it gently so it can take on a new layer. Soften my material. I'm going to just add it on the outside. So soften the compound, the new compound I've added. One, two. Here for the sun fork. Doing the same movement, the sun I'll share up. Upper lip, right and left. This movement should be done slowly, otherwise the tongue cannot mold the green stick. The green stick takes some time to flow. So you can see that. Our patient is very good in doing it. Yeah. Now you can see it very clearly, the reverse S and the correct width of the vestibule as well. I want to remove my excess and I'm going to add some material here so I get the retromolar pad as well before I go to the other side. 
the excess you want to heat up your instrument make sure it's clean heat it up the tip just a little bit and you simply want to draw and take off the material if the instrument is too hot it's going to melt too much it won't come off clean this end is not particularly molded I'm going to take off that end yeah. I've just molded my retromyla head I'm going to add material a little bit here in the retromyla pad area sometimes when you cut it it becomes sharp so you want to maybe just scrape off a little bit so it's not sharp for the patient dry flame the tip a little bit so it can add on some new material add material on my retromolar pad region I'm going to just place it into the mouth and just compress it one two So in this position, I'm not making any tongue movement. I've just compressed it because I believe the retromolar pad will record by itself. You don't really need to do much of movements. And once it's done, you want to take it out and check. You can see the pad formed there very clearly. I want to go on to the other side. So on the other side, dried my tray, soften the material. Again, I'm going to place it in my retromolar head region. On some material slumps. I want to place it there. Dip my finger, just pull the green stick onto my tray, soften it. One, two, go into the mouth. Here for the sun for. Okay, the sun I'll share, the mini sun. Again, licking the lip slowly to the left and to the right causing the tongue to mold that area ah, that's wonderful okay again you can see that reverse as forming i'm going to add some material here because the thickness is inadequate and i'm going to mold it okay drive my tray and i'm going to just add a new layer Soften it a bit, get it ready to flow. Two, let's fill the sand for, place it down. I have a camera set up, so if the farm shui, I know, it's an alchair. And slow movement of the tongue. The tongue is molding the material by itself and not doing anything. You can see the lingual vestibule is molded like that, right? We're going to come back into the pre-mile ahead segment of the of the lingual vestibule. Okay, so before we go on further, you want to do the retromolar pad area. I want to remove the excess here a little bit. I want to remove some of this material from here. And want to add some material in the retromolar pad area. And soften a little bit. Okay. Okay. I just <coughs> one, two. pressure on the tray, expecting my retromolar pad to record by itself, and yeah, I can see the 
want to pad there clearly, but I can see there's some issue in the connectivity here. I have to trim this and soften it and put it back again. You want to cut this a little bit like that. You want to flame it a little bit. Put it back into the patient's mouth. Put it on the front wall. Put it in the center of the cell. So I think it's nice and rounded now at this point of time. Right from the top you can see the curve on both sides is a little more than this side. I'm going to come to this region. So I'm going to flame a little bit of this end so that it can attach onto the new material I'm going to place. You can see if it burns like this you need to remove the material because the material will not flow anymore. You can see it's well flamed, it's soft. I'm going to add new material. Okay all over the lingual flange. I'm going to pull some material onto my tray here, right? And I'm going to just place it into the mouth flame, dip, dip, and we go that side. Come into the mouth, rotate the tray into the mouth, it fills some full. You mean yes, sir? Slowly. Again, the same movement. Yeah, it's better to keep it slightly in. Okay. You can see that's how the lingual is flowed on, continuous with the procedure. You can see some of the material, excess material has flowed on to this side. You want to dry that and you want to cut off the excess. Clean your instrument, slight heat. This edge tends to be sharp, so it's a good idea if you can just scrape off a bit so it doesn't become too sharp. And then you can soften it from the outside and put it back in the patient's mouth so it becomes nice and continuous there. Dip, dip. Open the mouth, place the tray. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, you want to soften this material again, soften this as well. You want to add it on, pull it a little bit into the tray here so that it doesn't 
go off the tray, right? I want to soften it. It looks a bit thick. I'm sure the excess will flow out. Dip and we move. Keep the tongue saying. Here for the sand fork. Lana Matsaka. Here for the sand fork. So the same movement again. Come to the side better now. Better now. Better now. To the corner. There you go. You can see the lingual coming up and you want to remove the excess of course so I told you definitely will flow this is for you. yeah I'm going to scrape a bit here and then go in for my sublingual crescent so lingual area you want to soften both of these so that the new material can adapt to it soften both of them so just softening my material Material flow down to my ridge here. I like to push it away so it doesn't hurt the patient too much. Soften my material once more. Dip, dip. Put it into the mouth. Dip for the sample. Now here, if the thumb should be here, some people like to put their finger in the sand in thumb shape. Some people like to put their finger and ask the patient to push. Diff stuba. Diff stuba means aiva. Diff. Diff. Okay. So they like to do that so that the uh, tongue itself will push the uh, material onto the sublingual crescent. At this point, you can see that there is a tension. Just by molding the lingual flange, I haven't done anything on the buccal flange. At this point, you see there is a tension. So the whole talk of the lower denture being a floating denture is not really very true in all cases. In most cases, you will get a reasonable amount of the tension. And this is just with the lingual. I'm going to remove this excess material from here. Let's float onto the crest of the ridge. And for those of you who fear that that retention came out of that excess material, you want to go. When you place this denture, now that there is undercut engagement here, you can't just push it down. You have to push it backward, place it, and then pull it forward. So you go into the mouth, push it back, place it, and then place it forward. That way it doesn't hurt the patient. With this in position, having removed the excess, if the function right, see this. The retention is still there, it's not because of the excess, alright? Okay. So now I'm going to go on to my buckle. And the first part I want to mold when I'm doing my buckle vestibule is my mesetric notch area. The mesetric notch area is this area from the retromolar pad all the way up to here where my buckle shelf area is going to be. So from the retromolar edge of the, the anterior portion of the pad to where my masseter muscle attachment is over and my buckle shelf starts so that means that all this area is going to be remolded again this green stick as well so I'm going to soften it up 
take some material 